are approaching the 25th anniversary of the death of Diana, the Princess of Wales. We thought we'd look at the often misunderstood relationship between the princess and the queen. Daily Mail columnist and royal biographer Robert Hardman gave us his thoughts. The queen is, uh, her faith is incredibly important to her. She is a, uh, she's a big tent kind of person. She's very forgiving. And, you know, she could see um, that um, you know, Diana was a, a wonderful mother um, to Harry and to William and, and obviously with William in line to the throne the Queen could see how important that relationship was so it was you know a relationship that like in any family would, would have its stresses but um, right to the end um, you know the Queen could see and chose to see the good in Diana. And the death of Diana came as a ghastly shock um, the Queen was told um, right away in the middle of the night and her absolute priority straight away was the boys. Uh, you know, history relates that, that sort of the Queen was sort of slow to respond. She was not slow to respond. I mean, she was absolutely on it right away, and her priority was, right, we've got to make this as bearable for these poor, traumatised boys as we possibly can. And that meant sort of throwing the warm embrace of uh, Balmoral, of the family, around them. I mean, she went straight into grandmother mode rather than straight into sovereign mode, if you like. She was an exceptional and gifted human being. In good times and bad, she never lost her capacity to smile and laugh, nor to inspire others with her warmth and kindness. I admired and respected her for her energy and commitment to others, and especially for her devotion to her two boys. At the same time, she was extremely aware of the fact that this was, you know, represented a, a major challenge um, for the monarchy uh, and, and it was a, a great family tragedy. Um, there is this, again, this, this sort of perception, this, this rather, I think, misplaced media um, narrative um, that the sort of royal family was sort of asleep for most of the week after her death and that, that, that somehow the sort of the, the Blair government had to sort of come to their rescue and show them what to do. I mean, that is complete piffle. She was very much um, uh, you know, very involved, very keen to make sure that uh, the, the, the sort of Diana spirit character was properly um, recognised and respected. And in fact, it, in the start of that week, it was the Spencer family themselves who were calling for a, a private funeral. They wanted to, to mourn um, Diana um, privately away from the cameras. And it was really, it was the monarchy led by the Queen saying, well, you know, the people's princess, I mean, as Tony Blair called her, I mean, the palace weren't calling her that, but they fully respected and, uh, and understood that sentiment. That had to be, uh, you know, the, the, the world had to, had to be given the opportunity to pay their respects to Diana as well. I think there is, again, this idea that somehow uh, Diana's death uh, was, was a sort of electric cattle prod that, that suddenly turned the sort of Victorian institution into a modern institution. And that, again, that's a complete misreading. I mean, the monarchy had been going through very, very fundamental internal reforms, probably the most extensive internal reforms in hundreds of years, um, through the late 80s and into the early 90s in terms of sort of management system structure. Uh, it had become much more meritocratic. It was changing the way it did things. It had changed the royal finances completely. Certainly, there was a sort of a, a, a greater openness to doing things differently. That was very much a, a Diana legacy, if you like. She certainly um, made it easier for um, the, the, the more modernising progressive voices in the palace to, 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 to be heard.